Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn and another episode of Exploring Genetics. We have four snakes here in two tubs. Two bigger snakes are here, two smaller snakes are here. There are three total genes represented between these four snakes. And I want to go over a few things here. So, we did a pairing between these two animals last year, okay? The female here is a banana cinnamon, big, beautiful, awesome snake. And the male, much skinnier because he's been breeding and not eating, but he's doing fine, don't worry, is this guy here, and he is a banana green pastel. So let's first do a little bit of explanation of the green pastel gene for those of you who haven't watched our previous videos or already know it on your own. Okay? I want you to look at these two snakes side by side and note some differences and some similarities. Okay? These are full adults, so they're not going to change their color any further than they are right now. All right? Uh, the first thing everyone notes is that the cinnamon is clearly darker. Okay? Banana cinnamon, much darker than the banana green pastel. Right? Um, the yellows on the banana green pastel are brighter and more fluorescent looking. The yellows on the banana cinnamon are beautiful, but they're more of like a soft yellow, a banana colored yellow. <laughs> of course, I mean, it's a banana, but I meant, you know what I mean. So anyway, um, the possibilities from this pairing were... Single gene bananas, super bananas, cinnamons, green pastels, or like multi combinations of those super banana, cinnamon, super banana, green pastel, or banana, cinnamon, green pastel. Okay? Um, I actually will probably go pull one more snake, but we'll see. We'll see. I might not have to do that. Anyway, um, what we are trying to determine is the exact genetics of one of the offspring from this clutch, okay? I don't think I will pull the other one because we know exactly what it is. Um, and I'm not having this be a video where we just show a bunch of ball pythons. I'm trying to, I'm trying to focus on what did the genetics do to this snake, right? Um, green pastel is also called lace blackback. Um, like all common names, these are terrible. It shouldn't be called that. It's not a pastel, it's nothing related to a pastel, and it also doesn't always have a black back. Uh, so that's just, they're terrible names. <laughs> and they're even more terrible because they're just a line of het retizanthic, okay? They're fully compatible with a normal het retizanthic. Uh, you could get a super from that breeding, is what I mean. They're, they're totally compatible, right? But they are a nice line of het retizanthic. Definitely, they, they're a standout line. So. Het retizanthic, also a terrible name, because while yes, you can have a heterozygous version of it, in the reptile hobby, when we say het with any other gene, we're talking about a recessive animal, okay? Or, or a recessive mutation of the animal, okay? Where a het is going to appear normal, and you have to have a homozygous version of the animal for you to change the look or phenotype of the snake. So, it's all really confusing, okay? And I apologize for that. Um, but the next thing you need to know is that cinnamon and black pastel and het retizanthic, or in our case, green pastel slash lace blackback, are in the same gene complex, which just means that in the actual DNA of the snake, those two alleles, those two versions of the gene, occur on the same gene locus. Okay, um, so they can act like a super, because they are a super. You can have a homozygous snake that is a cinnamon green pastel. It's called a gargoyle. We produced one. We got a banana gargoyle, and it is beautiful. Um, so, because both of those are on the same gene complex, if you have a gargoyle, if you have a green pastel cinnamon, and you breed it to a normal, you cannot produce a green pastel cinnamon. It's only going to pass on one of those two alleles. So you're going to either produce green pastels 
or cinnamons. But the nice thing is you can't produce normals because it has to pass one of those on, right? Just like a, any super, you know, a super Mojave is going to always pass on Mojave, but it's not going to pass on super Mojave to its offspring. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope you're following me here. Because what I really want to do this video on is what are the genetics of that snake in that box right there, okay? So, you've got a good look at the parents. Let me show you some side profiles real quick and the top of the snake, as well as maybe the belly, um, because the belly actually shows a lot of difference and might help us out. First, we're gonna do the banana center. This is the mother, her name is Shayla. I love her, she's a beautiful, wonderful snake. Let's look at her sides very carefully. Look at her back. Notice the complete lack of a stripe along her back. Okay, it's just dots like normal. And look at her belly. As long as you got good shots of all that. Pretty clear belly. Okay, not much pattern, not much color. Just a nice kind of off-white clear belly. Okay, let's put her in the bin for a second. Pull out Papa. All right, here's the dad. Okay, here's Dragonite. Let's do the same thing. Let's look at his sides. Look at his back, and again, notice the relative lack of any striping. This is supposed to be a lace black back, but I don't see any lace and I don't see a black back. And the banana wouldn't change the pattern. It would obviously change the color, so yes, you can say, well, it's not black, but there's also no striping, okay? There's no band of color down the back. I have seen some lace black backs that have that, but ours doesn't, okay? Uh, we know that he's carrying it, though, because they formed a gargoyle. One of the offspring was a gargoyle. It's a green pastel cinnamon, right? Okay, let's look at his belly. His belly is not white. It's clear, but it's also quite yellow, okay? Uh, I don't know if the camera's showing much of a difference between his belly and her belly. I hope it does, okay? But it's much more yellow than hers. And overall, he's just a more yellow snake. He's brighter. He's more of a fluorescent type of yellow. She's more of a soft yellow, okay? Um, so last shot, and then let's put him back. And then this is gonna be real fun, trying to get both of them back in a little bit here. Oh, ninja-like. So, I have two snakes in here. One of them is just a single gene cinnamon just so you can see what just a cinnamon looks like. Not you yet, almost. It's also had albino, but albino is a true recessive. It's not gonna, it's not gonna mess with the snake really in, in its heterozygous form. So, this is a single gene cinnamon, nice and dark, no striping, um, nice blushing on the sides. Uh, everything in this complex seems to raise the white from the belly up the sides a little farther than you would see in a normal, right? It's got those flames going. Um, the belly, though, a little busier further in than on the mom, who's banana too, but the very center of the belly is clear, and it's just a nice white to off-white color, okay? No striping on the sides, no striping on top. Just a nice, dark, beautiful snake, okay? Head for albino. Now... The PA still existence. Sorry for all of those of you who actually speak French. This is clearly a super banana because there is zero spots. Okay, so those of you who are wondering, is my snake super banana or just regular banana? Because sometimes in you know very complex combinations, it might not be instantly uh, obvious. Well, hold on to your snake for four or five months. If it still has absolutely no spots and it has some siblings that do have spots, it's a super banana. The supers do not get spots. Only the single gene bananas get spots, okay? So it's a super banana, um, and it's not a gargoyle. So it did not get cinnamon and green pastel. It only got one or the other. We don't know which one it is. At first, we just were like, oh, there's no black back, so clearly it's a cinnamon, right? It can't be a lace black back without a black back. Well, yes, it can. We've now seen several breeders, uh, very reputable breeders, who are 100% positive that their snake is a green pastel slash lace black back, and it does not have this nice stripe down the back. So that cannot be, we had to throw that out as a marker. <laughs> 
Um, it's a nice indicator, kind of like het pides often have railroads on the, on the bellies. I don't know if you've seen that before, but it's not like 100%, right? Well, we tried looking at the sides. We noticed that a lot of our green pastels on the sides, instead of the alien heads having what I call necks that attach to the belly, um, they tend to just blur together on the bottom, creating almost a stripe of color along the bottom of the sides towards the belly, okay? And we're like, oh, maybe that's a good marker for green pastel. I was all ready to declare this a super banana green pastel at that point. I totally had flip-flopped. Well, in examining the mother more carefully, who is a banana cinnamon, she also has that trait <laughs> where most of her alien heads are very jumbled together. They don't connect to the belly uh, and almost look striped on the sides. So we threw that out the window and now we are just trying to figure out something else to help us identify this snake. The belly to me looks much more like the cinnamon than the green pastel. The green pastel, the father, has a very yellow belly. The mother has a very clear and white belly. However, the sample size is tiny. We have one and one of each of those gene combinations and this is a super banana, which, which bleaches color. It, it pales the snake and makes it lighter. So there's a perfectly good chance that it's the super banana influence that is making the belly nice and white and clear. Now we get to the point of the video where I admit I don't know what to do next. <laughs> uh, it's a gorgeous snake and it's a female and we're keeping her and we will breed her. If it turns out to be a green pastel, we'll still call her Cinna. Uh, we're not going to call her Greena or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, that's where we're at. So thank you guys for tuning in and bearing with me as I kind of slog through all these uh, complicated, at least to me, complicated um, genetic markers and ideas. Um, we like doing these kinds of videos. Uh, I know for some of you guys it gets a little dull, but uh, to me it's interesting, so we do the videos. Anyway, uh, Anyways, thank you so much for watching. This has been Exploring Genetics, and until next time, we're the Reptile Bar.